A very warm welcome back to the Genting Highland Resorts as we celebrate 2017's opening week with a big esports tournament. It is a Dota 2 tournament, or some would say a Dota 3 tournament, because we are into 7.01. Welcome back to the NVIDIA Experts Desk. Myself, Purge, Capitalist, and Mel back with us as well, ready for our second game of the day. This one, Execration versus Digital Chaos. Um, I'm, I'm sort of trying not to get too excited about this, but I feel like there could be some fireworks in this game. There definitely could. Uh, I think um, DC's a little unhappy with how they did at Boston. They were expecting to get probably top two at least. Um, they expected to beat Adfinum. It didn't go that way. There could be another upside here. Execration um, didn't, wasn't able to make it to Boston, didn't get to show their stuff, but I think they have a lot of talent and a lot of great players, and they could actually provide an upside here. By fireworks, you mean DC standing with a rocket launcher and Execration just standing completely <laughs> still doing nothing? Sorry, buddy. Take a different way. Match. Do you think it's going to be one more sided than uh, yeah. the last match? I oh, think so. wow. I, I, did dis no. I heavily disagree with yeah, that. Yeah, I'm with Cap. In the beginning, of the, I, I definitely thought that the VP match would be one a little bit more sighted towards uh, VP than this game is for DC. I think DC is still a little bit questionable as a team, and Execration, I think, is uh, probably stronger at this point, just for the sake of like longevity and the fact that they've got such a, a strong playmaking star. In yeah, DC. well, let's, let's focus on Execration. We'll, we'll show you their lineup in a moment as well. In the way that they've grown over the last 12 months, given that that's, it's been very impressive, isn't it? I mean, 12 months ago, people were just like, who are these kids? Where are they from? And they've had a few team changes, obviously players coming back in now, DJ obviously being a, a big force to be reckoned with. We saw him at ESL 1 uh, Manila last year, and of course at Manila Major was just a standout star for them as well. So yeah. they've got some star power in this team. Yeah, they do. Um, and, and their other cores as well, very fantastic players. The part I'm really curious about though is, is DJ going to play the same in the offlane role? Because mm -hmm. in, in all of those really big playmaking times, he was almost always playing four position, amazing roaming, made a lot of map pressure. Can you do the same from the offlane? I think he can, especially with the new patch, but I'm excited to see how the playstyle shifts. For you him. could still play Enigma. Huh? Offlane Enigma is actually a thing in this patch, so uh, we can still see him make big impact, I think, with those big team fighting ults. Yeah. Any any other standouts for the execration do you feel, Cap? Um, I mean, I think you need to make sure that you keep... Um, I mean, I think versus almost all the Southeast Asian teams, you keep Meepo out of the pool. Mm -hmm. um, I think... I don't know. I don't, I'm not Gabby, sure how he... Gabby's been had, had, had some fantastic performances. That famous clip where uh, Winter and OD were casting it, and he just dodged like a million projectiles with Puck, sold his blink tagger, bought it again to dodge another. Like That guy's amazing as well. But I have, I have a lot of faith in their team. I think you need a, a, a very good playmaking mid um, in order to set the tempo for the game for execration. Yeah. So, so why are you so Don't get down wrong. on execration, I think, I think execration is a great team. It's not that. But they're up against DC. This is a second place TI team, top four major team and with some standout players on each and every single role on the team that are all at the highest possible level. That's, that is the sole reason for why I think DC's gonna stomp, but I also think DC's gonna go all the way to the grand final, so it's not surprising, it's just a better team. Okay, uh, let's talk about Digital Chaos right now. We mentioned at the top of the show, uh, obviously having a player like Misery on your team helps enormously with the experience that he has and drafting that he's been doing as a captain as well on that team. Obviously gonna pay dividends, but I, I wanna focus on one other player, which I think doesn't always get the, the limelight, and that's Moon Meander. As, as, you know, we've mentioned that offlane is such an important role right now mm -hmm. in this new patch. So presumably, this man is it's time to shine, isn't it? I think so. Um, I think one of his best features as a player is that he's amazing in lane at outplaying people. Um, his, his ability to just know when his opponents are out of position, when they don't realize it, is, is amazing. He gets solo kills fairly regularly, sometimes gets double kills against safe lanes. That's something that you can really value here, especially if, if the last game is going to be any sign of how the rest of the games in the tournament go. There's rotations all over the place, and if Moon can, can abuse those kinds of things, those laning matchups, even if somebody's alone for just uh, two minutes or something with their supports off somewhere else, that, that could absolutely impact the game and force bad rotations from their opponents. Yeah, I think um, if you look at Digital Chaos, they, they felt like um, Moon Meander was a better pickup for their team. And I think I would actually agree with that just because I think Moon Meander stands out as a, a more aggressive uh, offlaner that is able to create a lot of space for both their mid as well as their carry. And I think both those players are actually a little bit more farm oriented. So they need a playmaking offlaner um, for Digital Chaos. And Moon Meander, I think, has been doing excellently well. I think, uh, although we were going back, I remember. Um, it was like the second season of MLG, the land we had there. Um, I remember thinking Moon Meander was probably one of the, the best nature prophets um, at that time. I thought like his aggressive playstyle with, with that hero was so good. And I think that aggressive playstyle has, has managed to, you've managed to see the space that he creates with heroes like Slardar being able to always 
be that playmaker that is able to set the, the tempo for the game, which allows, it puts a lot of pressure on him to be able to perform in the early game, and it takes a lot of pressure off both their mid and their carry. He's fun to follow regardless, because like in early 2016, he'd say, it doesn't matter if I TP down to my lane and die five times early on. That's just how offlane is being played right now. But because he's this ag aggressive player, sometimes he'll come out on top, and if he actually wins those battles where he fights the support or fights the carry mm -hmm. and wins, the game is already yep. over. Like, he can single-handedly win the game for your team, and he n he'll never lose it. Mm. One of the other players that we've, we've spoken a lot about actually throughout the last 12 months is Weeha, who man that came from the ladder and everyone said, oh, great pub star, can he do it in a pro team? Not really sure. We said the same about Miracle, we said the same about Sumail, we said a, a number of players, Anna more recently as well. This guy seems to have delivered over the last 12 months. Uh, I mean, maybe not to the level that Miracle did in his first 12 months, but he's definitely produced the good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, he was, he has some inconsistent results. Um, he didn't look amazing at Manila. He had some, uh, some iffy matchup performances there, but played great at TI, has been playing very well since then. Seems more consistent than he used to be. Maybe it's, it's that typical, like, six months after you get picked up on a pro team thing, or yep. maybe a year after that. Um, I, I think he's, he's definitely somebody to watch uh, in this tournament. I'm, his hero pool also seems pretty diverse, which could really benefit them. Um, in, the, in, this, uh, in this new meta. Yeah, definitely so. And uh, the other two players on the team, we've got Saxon Resolution as well. I mean, such a well-rounded team, Cap, isn't it? Yeah, Saxa is for sure, I think, one of the, um, the supports that came out of this last year the, the strongest. I think he definitely proved his mental going from uh, even more so, I think, than Weeha, because at least Weeha had less, like, kind of constant presence on like BBC and was playing on these like tier two, tier three teams and people recognized him. They just weren't sure if he can make that trans transition to tier one. I think Soxa more than most others came a little bit more out of left field and was like one of those supports who just like all of a sudden people, everyone was like on the, on that radar. Like I think um, another player you could talk about is like GH gun, you know, from, from liquid, mm -hmm. very similar, right? Where all of a sudden they come out of nowhere and they're just like, everyone is talking about that player because they have such strong performances from the four position that they're able to, um, to every single game have an impact with roaming heroes, which I think is very tough to have. I think roaming is probably the, a, especially with the offlane changing, I think it's the most inconsistent role. Right? It's very hard to get strong performances every game out of your four position. Yeah, I completely agree. I think Saxa is probably one of the most unsung heroes in, in Dota just because of how many great players we have in the Western scene, especially on the four position or in, in the support roles in general. You're like you, in, in 2016, we have players like GRX, Crit. We've had Cypher 1516, Breakthrough. There's all these big names, but Saxa has all, always been performing, always delivering these top performances. Yapso is another name that, that stands out, mm -hmm. and yet He's just this quiet type that just does his role every time. He does it to perfection. And he's still not appreciated as much as I feel like he should be. With, with that said, though, he has been playing a little bit more five lately. Um, obviously, yeah, he was yeah. very historically That's why four, I but, but Misery's been taking more of that four role in the last month or two. So it'll be interesting to see where, where that falls. And he, he mentioned he does like playing four better on the way here, but um, you know he, he does what his team needs, and I think he'll be able to handle it. You know how I know Sox is really good? How? He's able to climb in NA with support. Yeah, I, that guy just picks up support most games, and he's still able to, to climb MMR really well in yeah. NA. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, that's good stuff. And Resolution's the final member we haven't spoken about. Uh, how, do you, how do you feel he, he fits into the team, Jake? Uh, ar arguably 16's best carry player, I think. Is, uh, do, do, I mean, let me ask you a slightly different. Do, do you think it's better that he plays in an international squad like this rather than a home base squad? with all the politics that, come, that comes with I mean, that it's, region. It's probably because of the politics in the region, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's obviously worked out really, really well for him. You know, you could have hoped for him to re rejoin Navi and create this strong Ukrainian powerhouse. They're trying a different path now as well, and I think that's great. I don't think he needs to. I think he's, he has a, like, they seem so friendly yeah. within the team. You know, they love each other. And so there's no, absolutely no reason for why they should change any of that. He also seems to love the American lifestyle. Yeah. You know, I almost gave up on Resolution. Remember a really long time ago, he was like the CIS superstar at yeah. one point. Like, people were like, oh, this guy's crazy. You know, this guy's an incredibly good mid. He's always going to be so strong. And then, like, the CIS team, like, the whole entire region just had these issues and issues and issues. And it was just like, it's it seems like Resolution's just kind of lost there, yeah. right? And then he's able to leave that region and uh, very clearly shows himself to, to have enough versatility as a player to be able to adapt to and carry position and do amazingly well there. Mm.
Okay. In terms of when these two teams match up, uh, Jacob's got very clear ideas. He thinks this one's a, an absolute dead cert. So I'm not even going to talk to Jacob anymore. But if execration can pull this one off, where, where is it going to come from? Is it going to come from a bit of draft crafting? Is it, is it going to come from a, a special player moment? What, what is it going to come from? I'd, I'd like to see some play that's a little chaotic enough where, where the other players are thrown off. Maybe some unpredictable movements, maybe some... Um, some some aggression that that it just it's so constant that your your enemy team can't really set up and do what they plan to do. Uh, put them on the back foot. Don't let them react to um, the way that they want to play the game. Um, and I think that's a really good thing that C teams can do. Very good aggression. Um, and in some of the cases, they will fall flat there. They'll do something inefficient, and then they'll get out farm for 10 minutes, and then they lose any of that advantage. But um, if they can put those things those two things together, especially with all the extra practice they had as a team, and especially with all, all the extra drive as well, I, I think they have a shot. Yeah. Do, do you think the first game that we've seen today gives them any indication of maybe what they go with? Or do you feel um, like they'll, they'll stick to what they want to do right now? No, I think I think the, the first game of today uh, gave me some I ideas. And, and that is that maybe um, while the patch is definitely aggressive and such, you can't rely on just overly pink off um, oriented crews just because we saw the way that um, they, the VP was able to counter that so well, right, and be able to keep their objectives. There was so much fighting going on, but no objectives being taken by Fnatic. And I think that Execration may have to keep that in mind and go, okay, yes, we need to be aggressive, but we also can't let ourselves be outdrafted um, the way that Fnatic did. I think that Execration, I know one possible thing is like the, the Meepo that we brought up earlier, could be Execration also give the Meepo to DC and know how to counter it as well. Yeah. Um, that, that is something that I think DC, like, probably Meepo is going to be like one, two ban. For, for most teams here, but if another team knows how to play it, know how to counter it, maybe we can see that something. That, that could be that little bit of edge that Execration has. But you think maybe Execration just back away from that all-out ultra-aggressive kind of style that we've seen them play in the past? Yeah, maybe. I think, um, I think you do have to still keep uh, scaling. Just because it is a very five-man heavy patch doesn't mean that you can uh, forsake your late-game power, um, particularly when it comes to, uh, I mean, the other series, right? We had um, the Luna picked up. Is that NP versus newbie? Mm -hmm. um, I think the, those kind of cores are still very important because of the way they scale later into the game. They're able to shove out waves, take objectives really quickly. Uh, I think you need to still make sure that you are able to play your game at 45 minutes just as well as you play it at 25 minutes. I think it's worthwhile noticing or noting that it's very likely that Execration will play similar to Fnatic just because of how regions scrim. Yeah. And they'll probably, you know, Fnatic probably picks up what they've had success with. And the teams that they've been playing the most against are the two other teams present here today, Execration and Warriors, Warriors Gaming, probably. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so seeing Slada wouldn't be a surprise at all, Lifestealer potentially as well. And on DC's side of things, I also think uh, they'll probably go for the safe choice and ban out the, the Luna and then go for the Juggernaut the same way VP did. So I think in, in a lot of ways, we might see very similar drafts to what we just noticed. Or yeah. Slaughter is their, their most picked, right? So if Execration do go down, down that route, they need to make up for the mistakes of Fnatic, make sure they ban away the Legion Commander. They make, uh, that was banned by Fnatic, but the OD, I think that was the biggest problem, right? OD was uh, very clearly a hero they couldn't let. Yeah, very tough to deal with indeed. Uh, right, we are almost ready for the main stage. So let's head over right now to Eri, who's going to introduce you to our next two competitive teams. Here we go with our second match of the tournament. Are you guys hyped? I feel, no, I feel the hype because we, we even have a baby. There's a baby right there. He's getting into Dota early. It's wonderful parenting. That's wonderful. All right. We have our second match with chatting, and this team feels even better then of course the last we have a new roster and they feel even better we're gonna see how they do let's make some noise and call on execration
opponents, please welcome Digital Chaos! Digital Chaos then, ready to rock and roll in their first game of ESL1 Genting against Execration. A little bit of housekeeping for you as well. We're going to result in the other game in Group 8. Newbie have taken down NP in their opening game. Of course, their second game in Group B is also going to start at the same time. WG versus Wings. We'll let you know if we get a result from that one as we go through. We're going to focus on this particular game, Execration versus DC. Heading into the draft again, Kevin, you've, you've had one to analyze and one to look at. <laughs> are we going to see something similar, different? What are we going to get? Slaughter. It's going to be a slaughter. Again. That's all I got. Okay. Cop out. I, I think the teams are going to play really safe. It's a best of one. Yeah. Um, and the, the teams that are expected to win, um, we saw it out of a VP in the last game. They grabbed the stuff that they needed. They grabbed the hero counters that still fit the roles that were still played in the last patch a little bit. Yeah. They're going to play safe stuff. We're not going to see weird stuff until we see best of threes, unless we see it from the underdog team. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's the point, isn't it? Execration here. They could throw a complete curveball, Jacob. Yeah, but I think it's more likely that DC will. I think, uh, well... You think DC will? Really? Yeah, I think Misery could potentially pick himself, you know, it, it depends on what he gets for the rest of the team early on. Like, if, if, if they, for instance, manage to pick up a Rubik, uh, I think Misery may, may very well go for, like, and I say a curveball, it, like, punch, maybe. Stuff like that. Something, you know, slightly... It's slightly unorthodox. I know it's really, really good, but it's still, you know, it's not a safe bet. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's just not, a, uh, not necessarily the first DC support hero that you think of, right? No, so. exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. You know, something out of the ordinary for their particular team. Yeah. The uh, people at home, you believe that it's digital cast in favor of 7426 over execration. I would imagine that that's probably about right, isn't it? Uh, I would say probably, yeah, I think it's pretty close. I, I, I personally would give this match maybe 65-35 to, uh, to DC. Um, you can't lean too heavily against Execration just because there's a lot of unknown factors here and they're not a, like they still have a lot of talent on their team, even if they aren't considered to be like a very clear tier one team. So um, in this kind of patch, right, anything can happen. For yeah, them, they, have, so. they have the potential to being a top 16 team in the world, though. I mean, absolutely. They got to Boston, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they should have. Yeah, I, think, should. Um, well, I think one of the things is <laughs> rough. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how good uh, right. Execration is at being able to take objectives, because that was the, it was a very clear problem for me with that Fnatic game, um, and I, I don't know like how how they've been performing in you know some of their later scrims when it comes to to that aspect of the game, because I think that was very clearly a, a downside of the last series. Yeah. Well, I, I think that was a lot to do with the heroes they had and how the fights went. I mean, they didn't have very good lane pushers. They have yeah. what bounty hunter, slaughter. Those guys can't push lanes very rapidly. Lena's great at it, obviously. Life stealer's not that good at lane pushing. So if they don't take a team fight and win like three to zero, it's very difficult to turn that into a tower afterwards. And if you don't have lane pushes just to get the the waves out there in the first place, then it makes it further harder. The fights had to go really well there for Fnatic. So they definitely picked a very snowballing uh, focused lineup. And I, I'm not sure if that's the the play you want to make against a team like. Digital Chaos or VP because they have such strong laning presence most of the time. Um, most of the time, they're hero picks. Their supports are particularly lane strong, um, but they are also just naturally a strong, aggressive team. And laning phase is probably one of their better aspects. Mm. And they're just really disciplined. We, yeah, no, it's okay. they're Go really ahead. disciplined in the late game too. It's a team that that has had uh, lots of structure. Um, usually, the Southeast Asian teams. Um, group up a bunch of, of young players that are on, on, on average at least two years younger, I would say, than the average Western team kind of a thing. Very young players, less discipline, more emotions about uh, performing well, uh, not performing well, less tournaments, less land tournaments. It's, it's, a, it's a lot more pressure to play. So those could definitely affect things. In but terms also, of yeah, yeah. they have no inhibitions either. So you, you, sometimes you get that incredibly ballsy kind of plays from them where they just go, we don't care. I mean, I, I agree, and I love seeing that, but I just yeah. feel like we don't see that that Enough. often from Southeast Asian teams. There's usually it's usually more reserved. Yeah, um, I think worry. it always seems as if they're playing not to lose instead of playing yeah. to win. Yep. Okay. Uh, the other game going on. I just want to get your quick thoughts before we uh, head into the draft. But the draft is live, so I won't do that. We'll uh, talk about that one afterwards as we get into draft number two of the day. Darkseer and Omni Knight. Um, both of those are favorites for Execration in this patch. 
very limited data to go on, but um, they are both very heavy sustain offlaners, right? Uh, I think if you're not going to go down the initiation route, you need to be able to pick up a hero that very clearly offers you teamfight sustain, um, and both those heroes do with early mech, and then on the night just naturally being a strong healer. Execration doing their homework. Uh, it seems like they know uh, Legion Commander, important hero to ban out here. They're not going to go for the Shadow Demon first, um, which is a little bit well, more versatile. Luna. There's plenty of other heroes to work with. Um, besides the Luna, they, they think the Luna is more valuable. And I would, I would agree with that. I think Luna is um, a perfectly strong hero without the Shadow Demon. Did and you're forcing the enemy team to pick it. We didn't see Luna banned in the first game, did we? Yeah, we did. We first did? first yeah. two bans were Shadow Demon. Oh, yeah, they, they banned yeah. both Shadow Demon yeah. and Luna. Yeah. So, yeah, naturally, <laughs> execution. they have to pick up yeah. uh, Shadow Demon. And that does limit your strategies quite a bit, the fact that you're forced into this fight position, uh, and you also don't have the perfect partner for it. So I think DC definitely made the right choice uh, in their first pick. Though Execration doing the best thing possible, I think you, when you're facing up against a Luna, you want a, a lot of magic damage from your offlaner. Sand King is the best initiator that you can have at that point. Um, if you look at some of the other offlaners, they focus a little bit more on physical damage, or they're not just burst heavy enough. Um, Sand King is the right combination of magic, burst, and initiation. It's a great hero you can just leave in the lane as well. You can always pressure a core, especially a hero like Luna, who's not the longest range. She can't get caught in some of those caustic explosions. And here's the reason for why they didn't pick up the Shadow Demon rather than the Luna. It's because there was both Rubik and the Shadow Demon in the pool. They could play bo they both of them it. to, you know, yeah. same success. So there's no reason for them to do so. I think what's good for Execration right now is the fact that once Digital Chaos, Digital Chaos teams up, Execration can still push out the other lanes fast enough and then go down and defend because these two support-ish heroes can still push out lanes on their own pretty quickly. Execration could also uh, run the Sand King as a support. That is the one bit of versatility they have in this because they have a Shadow Demon, uh, who's one of the supports who can actually set up heroes like Sand King, Leshrac, um, those kind of uh, stuns that are not very powerful because of uh, their lack of range or the, they just take so long to throw out there. Um, I think Shadow Demon's the perfect hero. So that is still something to keep in mind. And I think they will because it's so hard to actually pull off a offlane Sand King at this level. You know, it's something that works in pops, but once you get to this level of the game, he'll just never see any level. I think the, the hard part is that Rubik as a five position counters Sand King so well yeah. that maybe you want to lower the farm priority or whatever you want to call it of Sand King uh, from a three to a four. I, I, I think it's a little bit less likely they run it as support. I, I just think it's an option out there. And these bands are so all over the place from game to game. It's pretty interesting <laughs> to watch. Uh, like, is the scrim stuff? Is, is Ursa picked here? Does Execration want to pick a tanky core weak to physical? We've, we've seen we play a lot of Ursa, and it, it is pretty good against oh, well, the Sanking at least. He shrugs off the, the Shadow Demon, like, stacks the, the Purge. He's also able to, if he gets the Iconim Scepter, deal with the Sand King really well, because Sand King's going to lead with a stun, but then you just very quickly pop that ultimate, you're not going to be feeling a lot of that FS Center damage. And on DC's side, I mean, Rana Band makes sense when there's a Shadow Demon Sand King pick up from the Execration. Should be a really easy setup with that. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I kind of curious where, which other way they'll go. I mean, obviously DC is pretty, they have a lot of magic damage right now, and Execration has some counter to that kind of burst by having Shadow Demon. Um, perhaps they're worried about DC um, diversifying and going towards BKB counters. What's interesting is Slada is still in the pool. That's true. My one prediction. <laughs> that's is all it, I had. Well, I think that's very likely. first pick prediction as well? Well, I was right last time. I mean, it, write that. <laughs> if you just look at the, the way that draft boiled down, right, I still think that, like, Sorter's very value, it just didn't find a place because DC chose to go for the Luna because it was still in the pool, right? In which case, Execration uh, felt Sand King was a better offlaner against Luna, and then Rubik is obviously the counter to, to Sand King. So it just kind of like those is, puzzle is pieces though? all is fit Sand without the sword arts. Like, I just don't see how he's ever going to get level. I just dual lane or something. I mean, everybody's been rotating so often. I feel like you can get away with it. And worst case, you go to a medium camp near your secret shop, and you can jungle that easily if you get satyrs or something. Yeah, uh, Caustic Finale is really valued to be able to juggle those creeps back and forth. I'm right. Yes. Nice. All right. So we are going to have Sand King support into Slardar. So Kevin and I were both right. Alex is going to ride this for like years. Yeah. Remember that time? <laughs> I don't need to. Just like he... I have uh, like a long list of those. I think... I think just like he wrote his early Dota career into years of <laughs> analyzing despite <laughs> never actually being an expert. expert. What? Uh, Cat was also right. Just like point that out. I mean, I, I don't feel the need to point out that I'm right because I, I, I do it for you, buddy. then you, you just constantly hear that every other sentence, you That's know? That's true. <laughs>
adorable. Uh, I like the OD ban though, because it, it gives um, Execration a lot of that uh, defensive support aspect that OD also provides. Um, and that should mean that when they initiate, if they initiate first, it should always give them the upper hand, especially with Sardar and Sanking, those two heroes, plus Shadow Beam on the backside. Like, I feel like they have a lot of great reactions. Wow, Tusk pick. Tusk is back. Okay, um, kind of a similar <laughs> reactionary pick, you know? You just snowball, pull yeah. people in, it's basically AoE disruption, you counter, Sanking, Epicenter. What did I miss? Did you do, see the do you know what, um Do you know what uh, Sox's name is in, <coughs> in pubs? I his, do not. His, uh, his, his name is, at least it's been for the longest time, uh, Buff Tusk, please. Because, oh. <laughs> you know, that hero is just, like, he's such a fun hero, and he's so fun to play from a forward position. You know, you just have, like, so much fun playing it. It feels like a playmaker. You can do a lot of things early, but, but it just got nerfed too hard to the ground. Hmm? Isn't it misery playing it? Yeah, it could be. Probably. I mean, Sox is an amazing Rubik, so. Exactly. Um, so you've got, like, you still need a hard initiator. What are What is left for DC? You've got Batrider. You'd be picking it into a Weaver, which, you know, there's going to be a very obvious Lincolns. They need, like, a run at you hero, something like a, a Centaur, I think, would be good, just yeah, because I they can keep their opponents from running away with Tusk. They also need something that can frontline for Luna if Luna gets jumped on. So I think something like that could Weeper. work. Ooh. Hello. I mean, Execration had to know this was going to come up. Yeah, and we, we spoke they... about it before the game as well. For both teams, this could have been a potential pick. Could have been a potential ban as well. Was missed by both. Banned in the first game. Not removed this time. DC pick it up. Do they do they have the solutions though? I mean they've got a lot of physical damage and they have amp damage and Sand King Burrow Strike. I feel like they've got some pretty good solutions. Yeah. They've got AoE control and single target physical damage with Slaughter Amp in with Weaver. Uh, Weaver and Slaughter are gonna have a hard time though. They're pretty mobile heroes that are gonna be ensnared down by Meepo. Uh, that that hero is like five stuns to work off of. Talking about ban option, change. Why did they go for the for the Legion ban rather than the Meepo? That still seems iffy to me, considering, you know, it's we. I mean, they, they, if Execration wants to play Meepo all the time, they, they surely have some solutions towards Meepo. I, I say they let it through. If they ban it, then that's one of the tools that they could actually use every game. Um, I mean, what what it, it are the solutions, phase, though, from, from the mid lane? Like, what, what Roaming, I guess, something like that would be good. Um, I mean, you have to gank him pre-3. Once he's 3, he's kind of doing whatever the heck he wants. And he's got a mountain. Like so. Yeah, you can't give him space because he starts picking up those bounty runes. DC's roaming is already better as well, in my book at least, especially in the, in the first five minutes. I like your centaur, though, um, Kevin, because if they're going to pressure the Meepo, they need the Shadow Demon Sand King to rotate in there, in which case the Tusk centaur. Um, we saw this from Wings, right? They, they ran a Tusk clockwork. Um, because of the combination, the snowball able to close the distance for the clockwork. Um, I think Centaur would work very similarly on top of the points you brought up before and the team fight and not letting Execration be able to escape. Um, but I, I think no matter what the offlaner is, right, they they are going to put a lot of pressure on that safe lane in order to free up Weeha's Meepo uh, to do what they want. They can also potentially aggro try. I mean, we're thinking of three different heroes to for Moonmi and the right is the Centaur, there's the Beastmaster, and the Tidehunter. The reason I keep going back to the time time is just... It's banned. Time's banned. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, not I, the title. I'm not the biggest fan of Beast this game, I feel. Um, obviously, Roar's great, but they have decent solutions with Shadow Demon and Weaver, I feel, against it. And most of their heroes are actually a little hard to kill. Like, you said the roaming is better for DC, and I kind of agree, but Snowball against a Sardar or a Sand King or a Weaver, that's, that's going to take at least a century, some gap close. They can react to it. Maybe they go something more defensive and farm heavy. You think Earth Spirit would have been the better pick instead of the Tusk, considering um, Execration's heroes? I don't think so. I mean, if you're going aggressive, yes, but I think they definitely need something a little defensive because of the Sand King Slaughter. Right. Nyx is out there as well. Uh, you got a lot of AoE damage that can potentially inhibit these heroes. And oh, that's right. Nyx the is information actually. that is gained, because you have Luna and Meepo who are both going to want to be able to farm or at least have information on what the enemy team is doing. What about like a Night Stalker? Yeah, Night Soccer Luna. They'd make it nighttime, they'd have huge vision advantage. They'll go for X. I, I like that okay. too. Good lockdown against Weaver, against Slardar, fairly tanky. Not a big fan of it against Shadow Demon, but it's you know still good. Still good. And it still gives them that snowball advantage that Centaur would have, just with an axe instead. How? Oh. Okay. We'll finish things off with a timber song. It's pretty good. That hero definitely puts pressure in the lane against Meepo, especially with these roaming supports. Um, it's a great late game too. Yep. All pure damage. Yeah. They've got good Meepo solutions. This kid. I think Digital Chaos still have better late game. 
um, in which case the DC may just be able to fall back off the fact that they can play very push heavy with the Luna. And once he picks up the Manta, they push out these waves, and then that'll free up room for the Meepo to find pickoffs. All right, thank you very much, all three of you. Uh, we will, of course, return back to our NVIDIA expert desk after the game. It's time to head over to our commentary team. Let's return once more to Toby Wan and Merlini. Yeah, it's time to get underway. DC going up against ex Execration. If this, like the, any of the games that were coming out today, you're expecting to see Meepo, this, this was it. Like, with having Weeha, as well as just having Execration who leaned towards it all the time, like, we got it. That's like one of the highest probability Meepo games I think I've ever, ever seen. Uh, the, the panel was asking, it's like, why did you ban out, like, like different heroes at the very start? Why did you take out the Meepo? The simple answer is... Because no one's scared of Meepo. No, <laughs> I don't know about that. You might be very scared about Meepo when he starts doing this global control against you. I think the talent tree is way better for him than other heroes because he hits level 25 so much quicker. And his talents aren't bad at all. I think the plus four armor is very, very good versus the Execrations lineup. 25, I guess, is a little bit underwhelming. But we don't see much of Meepo. No? Well, he's kind of dropped off. Uh, there's been a lot of buffs up, which has made him a lot more enticing for people to pick. Uh, and we know, that, especially in the SEA scene, where Meepo has gone up high in priority. I, th I think the Bounty Rune change is a very, very big buff to Meepo. Because you can technically pick up all four Bounty Runes and just in very quick succession if you have very good map control. I'm not exactly sure what the build is for Meepo. Uh, obviously, Scepter at some point. But for Boots, uh, Treads is a pretty good option because you get full sh stat sharing. But BOTs is also a very good option on the Meepo, too. I'm curious to see which one he's, he's going to go for. It's kind of fun to actually look at uh, Weeha with his inventory. So he's got Bottle, he's actually got Iron Talon, and he's got Treads all inside of his quick buy at the moment. So he's already giving you at least his first his first wave of items. I think the treads with the Luna Aura is going to be really, really strong. Uh, we used to see it sometimes with Meepo and Ancient Apparition. So you get all the uh, all that plus magic damage on your hits. Okay, so how heavily Meepos. should Execration actually commit to keep the Meepo down? And can you, in fact, do it? Like it's you're very running, hard You're, to you're running this down. Timber versus Meepo. You've got SD to roam around. Uh, is this when the Slaughter does more with these early boots that you've got on him? I think it generally is way easier to actually just shut down to other heroes. Uh, like last game we saw that the Slaughter was very slow at getting his Blink Dagger. It's kind of like that you shut down the heroes that enable the Meepo, and if he gets his farm, that's fine, because then you can just kill him, you get uh, a ton of bounty. You just need to make sure oh, that... Top lane, DJ. Oh, he's going to borrow strike back out of it. Issue with shards. Yep. And telekinesis, DJ still having that very stable escape mechanism for that offlane. He doesn't have an Iron Talon, nor does he have a Quelling Blade. He can stack at the one minute mark, but it's, it's going to be a tough offlane for him, especially with that Observer Reward eyeing his every movement. As long as he can survive, he's still going to have the Shrine to work with, and then you can have the rotations in from the Timber, uh, from the Slaughter, just to change things up a little bit. How do we actually feel about the Axe as well? So Axe on the offlane up against an SD could find himself in a bit of a rough position very quickly. It's, I think, very good versus the Weaver because very physical based and very squishy as well and very elusive. And the Axe, I think, solves most of uh, that. He is very vulnerable to the Timber Salt and the Sand King, though. That, so that's the one big problem that I see. However, his laning phase, I think, is going to be fine because they don't have that strong of a support duo on the bottom lane. Shadow Demon Slardar. Not that formidable. Well, top lane, DJ's in a little bit of trouble again. He's going to borrow his strike himself away as we have resumed the game. He only got caught by a telekinesis and shard. Sucks from misery, trying to make his life a living hell. And they're already, okay, here we go. So they've <laughs> maybe they've had enough of this laning phase and they're going to actually bring in the SD and the Slada under the cover of smoke to see if they can catch out one of these supports, which have been playing very, very aggressive. And it's the perfect time. Snowball is not up for the Tusker. They don't have that much damage, though. No Caustic, and this, they're all still level 1. We go. You're fighting into a Luna at level 1. Oh, you're starting up on Tusker. There goes your Barra Strike. The Crush is available, too. Sucks are losing a lot of life very quickly, and with the Shards, he doesn't create enough space for himself. He'll drop down, actually almost blocking in Resolution. The Barra Strike is on cooldown with a pickup from Misery just in the nick of time, pulling him away, so Resolution gets back into the safety of his Tier 1 tower. That was, that was a pretty big commitment. Two TPs, a smoking, but definitely worth it for the first blood there. They actually caught him at the timing where he was uh, trying to pool. So that was very timely by Execration. They also had that Observer World Attack, so they can keep eyes on Misery. But now Moonmander will remove himself from the jungle. This uh, bottom lane, Weaver's getting a lot of early levels. He's actually looping around the back of Moon. 
No TP support's gonna come down to him and Nando. He went two point Shikuchi, like just harassment, harassment, continuously trying to force Moon out of the lane. But Moon can now afford up almost his uh, tranquils, and then he'll be fine. Yeah, he just needs a couple levels, and Wii's already starting off into the jungle at the three minute mark. I usually don't see it th this early. Usually you see one Meepo in lane, especially around the stack timer, and then you'll just keep stacking up. But it looks like he just wanted to take out some of the medium camps in the meantime. It's very, very difficult to lane versus the Timber Saw. And with extra Meepos, you're just giving him extra reactive armor stacks. You actually concerned too that Timber has kill potential against, against oh, no, uh, no, no, Wii no. this early on? I, Until level six, like, is that when you start thinking more about it? Yeah, it's just, Wii's just trying to maximize his farm because Timber Cell's going to get his regardless. Oh, can't Moon, really stop he's going to be dead on bottom lane. Oh, the Gemini so Taxi able to chase him down. down. And no support available. The Digital Chaos second support was up on top lane, trying to do its work. Yeah, Axe is actually a very low armor hero unless he gets Berserker's Call, but he actually hasn't skilled it up yet. Opting for that one point in the battle hunger very early on, and when when his uh, berserker's call is down, the weaver's going to do a lot of damage, especially with the blightstone picked up very early on. And DJ is actually able to pressure the Luna up a lot. You want your sinking to be able to able to be in this position where he can actually come up to the creep wave, last hit, and threaten the Luna a little bit with like caustic plus uh, burrow strike harass. Even the SD with his build up, like no points up in catcher. I'm wondering if this is more of a of a lane kind of presence by having that as opposed to having the catcher, which is more of you like you straight up one hero kill potential. Yeah, it might be pretty good versus the Meepo too in the later game, throwing out all those uh, shadow poison stacks. It's, it's pretty uncommon nowadays for the shadow poison build, but they do have a lot of AOE on their lineup with the Temper Salt and the Sand King. So maybe just with that overwhelming amount of AOE, they can uh, kill the. Meepo. Moon's making his way down. Thanks to the Observer War that's sitting in the lane, uh, Execration should be very well aware that he's just farming up the close camp and actually scan back onto the tier one tower on bottom lane. So Execration Look at wondering stack. if something's happening, but now Moon is so low. Nando's going to rotate up. He hits him with Shikuchi, gets the bugs off, and Moon is very quickly dead. You can answer yourself the question, was it worth it for the camp? Maybe. <laughs> He has 640 games on Meepo. That's a, that's a lot. Uh, shards, that's nicely finish. done, DJ. He used the uh, initiation of the bar strike. Now snowball forward, DJ. Fade bolt from misery. He comes back out of the disruption. Able to find that kill, but Gabby starts his rotation over two. Saksa moving away. He can't actually escape from this one. One last hit from Gabby will do the job. So it's a one for one trade off. Execration did have to rotate their timber, however. It's still bought him enough time to buy items too, so it wasn't all in vain for him. Resolution backed off very, very quickly, valuing his own life over the life of the Sand King. Actually works out very well in the end. Like you take out the stack, DJ gets space in the mid, Slaughter got a little bit of space as well. Ah. Execration. Again, this is one of these these times, like we're, we're discussing it at the end of the last game, and so was the panel. It's like, okay, so who do you actually feel as the favorites? You look and say, well, the polls go the way of DC, the polls went the way before. It's like, okay, Fnatic's probably not going to have a great time, but. Fnatic had a, it wasn't a great start, but it wasn't a horrific start at the start of, of uh, their game. But now Execration, like, they got two out of the top three net worths on their side. The Meepo is actually behind that of the Weaver. It looks like they're off to a good start. Yeah, it all comes down to whether or not they can kill the Meepo in, in, in the middle later game. They don't have any defensive support for like, Tusk. I, it's kind of a half a defensive support because he generally doesn't have the mobility nor the range to actually pull in uh, the Meepos to save him. And sometimes you'll die after uh, because of the Timbers of AoE. So if, if they can kill him a couple of times, I think they'll be in a pretty good spot. But they're, they're still going to have to address him. He's power farming at this point. Misery just misses a courier snipe. If he was like maybe a second later, he would have found that courier, which is bringing the Yoga Club down to Nando. And they're ganking up on top lane, uh, too far away, Resolution and Saksa. Able to make that distance between the Execration and Aggression, and they knew this was coming. There's a good Observer Ward that's looking over the Tier 1 tower on the top lane. I like the decision for them to move the Timbersaw around, because there was no one in the mid lane, so they can have any hero free farm there. Like, Timbersaw is very, very strong at this point in the game. Level 4 reactive armor, like, no one can really kill him. Maybe with Eclipse and level 4 Lucent Beam, or if he's in, like, a really bad spot, they can kill him. 
And but you still got to do that against raindrops as well as high one charges. Yeah, so so they're in the spot where like this timber is just all well, up in business. Is he actually going to go in? Disruption's out. He's going to get just a little bit of shock from damage up. Timber chain. Oh, with the stun is there. Gabby now will put it to the test. Can they find the kill? The net's going to miss from Weeha. Gabby with the shock from down again, but it's going to be enough damage with the poop sound from Wee. He finds the kill. And Gabby is forced off the top lane, but they bring almost everyone down for that. Meanwhile, Moon on the bottom lane. Is there another gem night? Nando already used his time lapse, so he's not going to push the issue any harder against the Axe. Oh, maybe he will. With the Observe Ward up, he realizes Moon's moving over. Starts the, starts the Shrine. Resolution quickly TP down as well. At the Timbersaw, actually, didn't have that many items. He felt kind of immortal with the four reactive uh, armor. I think he had max stacks at that point, but simple double poof from Meepo. Put him in the grave. And good control from DC to make it work. Even though we dodged like some of the early nets, DJ with a haste rune is looking for his opening. It's up on top lane, so it sucks up. Barra strikes straight through the tree line, gets in range for the crush, and uh, this will be one very dead Tusker. Who's he going to snowball towards? And the choice is DJ. All the way down, and he uh, yep, dies to the SD. It's no problem for them. Luna's still farming. They're having their important heroes farm. They don't have any deaths on the Meepo nor the Luna at this point, and Meepo is getting, getting up there in terms of the divide that we stand. Just needs to make sure he can withstand the, the damage coming his way soon. That's why I kind of want to wait, wait and see how long it takes for Weaver to get his early items, and maybe that's when we start looking towards the Tier 1 towers. Is that, is that Execration's path? Like, they're getting a lot of good farm out of all the lanes. Do you look to them actually forcing down towers early on? Can they do that against this DC lineup? I think the jungle is more important. They don't have that great of tower seizures. The, the Weaver's pretty decent, but I think he can do that on his uh, own. I think what they need to do is get the blink up on the Sand King, on both their uh, Sand King and Sardar, and have the Timbersaw get to the point where he doesn't die when he makes, makes moves like that. Plus 15 damage for the Meepo. So I was wondering if you do that or if you go for the armor. I, more I, I, I thought he would go for the armor just because of the lineup that he's up against, but looks like he's going for the damage. Execration better going on a hunt. They're trying to make the most out of this observable. Well, it's only got a minute and a half left. But they see Moon. Yeah, they know he's close. They, they perfectly tiger. see Moon. They know exactly where he is. So this is a very simple kill for them. All they got to do is get that disruption off Moon playing and posturing very aggressively, but they actually start off with the bugs and, well, Quick jump away, there's your catcher, quick follow-up crush, and Moon has got nowhere to run. Even with the extra armor he's getting, he needs some good spins to make that work. That was Nando really just time lapses off the damage. Misery, Rezo. It's their turn. DC with their smoke maneuver underneath and their observe ward on the offlane tier one tower. It's, oh, it's and he has a net creep. The net creep is really good versus the sinking. Well, DJ, does he feel it coming? He's got TP av available if he can just get into the tree lines, but he's rooted up by the net. Nowhere to get free. Burra strikes down, but already Misery's in position. Grabs with the telekinesis and actually steals Burra Strike, cancelling off the Sandstorm and revealing DJ. Yeah, that's one spell you do not want to give a Rubik at this point. It, it just makes it life so easy for him. Like, you, you generally just don't die until you get your Blink Dagger if you, get a, if you have Burrow Strike. It's so easy for you to get in and out of fights and just pose a huge offensive threat. We playing around with Gabby in the mid lane, but does not connect on any of the nets. So it looks like he's going for the Mass Dragon Lance build, which is even better, I suppose, now that you get to share stats early. I wonder if he, if and when he's going to get this up there. Well, we were actually tossing up if it's even like as worthwhile getting it in the early game. Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe not, but it, it's, it's a lot of stats. And extra Meepo always comes in handy. Mm -hmm. But I think with this, he wants to fight early. They want to end the game early with, with this and fight with the uh, perhaps Max Luna Aura. Rezo looks like he has gone for two points in the Moonglaive, one in the Luna Blessing, so kind of a half build. There's, we, I've seen the four glaive build before, and that's kind of if you're free farming and no one's in your lane. This Lucent Beam build is much better if uh, people are actually contesting your lane. Magic damage is more significant than your physical in the early. I still build up to it. Like, you can still go for the four glaive build before actually capping out. Yeah, but you have a Meepo on your team, so do you actually need to do damage, or do you just need to max your aura so that Meepo does a lot of damage? His attack speed is ridiculous right now. Like, look at him. He, he was just clearing Ancients, but... But that does actually pose the question then, does Meepo any, like, go anywhere near the Luna? Like, we can control the entire map, you leave the DC4 left behind. Yeah, that's, that's okay for them. And in fact, the, the DC4 do smoke up behind the tower and uh, leave Weeha with his one little Meepo on the front. 
Scan will not connect. Nope. But, oh, the call from Moon off target. Gabby gets a shark room down. He's still got Tipper Chain, so the shark's not going to hold him in position that long. And now in comes Slada, but the stuns. It came out from Telekinesis. Snowball protection. It looks like he's actually going to go deeper, only towards the creep. Not too far. The forest strike in with the eclipse damage from the shark room. Whirling death. Gabby chains away. Gets himself a double kill. The DJ rooted up. Nowhere to go. So he'll epi send to the air. A misery dropping down. He needs to get that Scarab Beetle off his back, and that's what Gabby. Gabby's coming in for with the Shark of Misery. It's going to burn out. Gabby gets a triple kill on the Timbersaw. Starting to rake him the dough, not to mention the Blink Dagger, which is now also afforded up for DJ. Yeah, this has not been Moon's best game, giving the Weaver a lot of kills in the early game and missing a very uh, crucial initiation onto what, what could have been a very easy kill on the Timbersaw. But he went for a hood build too. I think it's very appropriate considering what he's been dying to. Oh, you were talking about it, that magical damage. Yeah. How do, how do you negate it? Having the hood is fine by itself, and now he's going to work his way into the Bloodstone as his, as his next item. Mm -hmm. Especially coupled with defensive disruption, it should be very, very easy. Now the, they need the sinking to be able to have a bigger impact. He got netted as he was channeling his epicenter and just couldn't even burrow strike in at that <laughs> point. It's pretty sad. Oh, Tusk. Well, yeah, they go again. Saxa able to actually hide himself beside the snowball with the one charges. He's still perched up, so he'll go for a quick punch, but knows his life is over. Maybe Meepo. No, he can't. He just throws out the net, but there's nothing more to come from this. And now you've got the top tower going down. Big one for Nando. He is rapidly approaching this Lincoln Sphere of his. And combining that with the Dragonlands. Okay, Gabby's getting just perma-stunned on bottom. Eventually it had to end. That dominated creep down, moons in the neighborhood. But that's 20 reactive armor charges already up on Gabby. Good luck. I'm wondering when they're gonna do Roshan too. I think both teams have like very, very good Roshan lineups with the uh, Amp and the Weaver Bug on the Radiant side, and then Meepo is very, very good. They don't have any life still yet, no full adds. I'm not sure if they're going to build it, but they could also take that down very quickly. It looks like DC, they're poised to break the smoke if they go up the hill. Misery in a perfect position to do so. What a great time to have that Blink Dagger over on Weehar. He's going to prepare himself. Misery's dropping down low. DJ killing him off with a Sandstorm, so Misery will fall. And now Weehar wrapping around DJ. Epicenter will start. It will channel out, but Weehar's got more than enough stats. He can tank through that while down the river. Moon's still being picked off, so a two for one, and in comes Gabby. Weeha poofing his Meepo back to the tier two tower and away to safety. Wow, what a Radiant stun from DJ. He, he, he knew a smoke pot, but he didn't kind of question where they are. He, he knew as soon as the smoke pot up the hill, he, they were just waiting, and he knew that DC was actually waiting for the smoke. It's kind of a next level bro strike on him. Radiant's oh, goodbye, Curious Snipe. Punched into oblivion. Another great spell for the Rubik, Shikuchi. That's a great Rubik game. More repositioning abilities for a Rubik. It's uh, it's the dream game for him. Maybe not so much once uh, Timber and Weaver start building up on their items. So the Lincoln Sphere, it's now only 40 gold away from Nando. Gabby is also rapidly approaching his Bloodstone, now sitting Slaughter about has like his 1,700. That's, that's very problematic because... Hey, you got both Blinks up already? Yeah. Uh, that's... Yeah. It's very easy to like blink crush in the follow up with the epicenter burrow strike. And there's very, very little you can do about that. Maybe with like Rubik Max Null Field and then Meepo's innately high magic resistance, they can they can tank it. It's kinda when I wanna move my eyes over towards Misery uh, to see where he's gonna ward, because he already put one down next to the bounty rune. The fact he took the bounty rune may reveal the fact that it's there. As the purge creep is just giving him a little bit of trouble to the slaughter. And they're actually wrapping around. They're in a good position to gank up DJ. If only they knew. His TP's on cooldown for 15 seconds and he hides waiting in the trees. Well, Moons could be very happy at least going against that Weaver, knowing he can get the call off. I wonder what DJ's, DJ's waiting for. He can't solo kill Meepo. Meepo will actually kill him if he tries. Looks like they're trying to make that mid push, but DC's all hanging around that area. Moon in the trees just waiting for a counter initiation. And <laughs> Meepo just farming, trying to get the most out of the map while Execration is biding their time. Okay, Gabby, that was coming up a while, a, a fair way. Misery's going to just pick him up and throw him around. As, uh, well, DJ's actually going to drop down on bottom lane, so Weeha with that solo kill. Now they jump in towards the mid with that call. Moon able to hold in the slaughter. They snowball up too, gives the extra punch into a kill. Gabby not doing enough damage, neither is Nando to really dissuade DC from this fight. 
So they keep the capture going, they keep the poison up, so Resolution having a little bit of issues where Resolution actually becomes DC's worst enemy. Being copied up, and Misery's almost going down, just the Glaze, he drops down to 36 HP. And with the bugs over on Weehar as well as Suxa. Now back up to where the T1 Tower used to stand, and Execration will not push the issue, being down to three men. Meepo is out of control. He's been kind of quiet this game, but he's almost level 18. This is 18 minutes into the game, which is kind of absurd considering everyone else's uh, levels right now. So he's going to have his Scepter, see it in his quick buy up next, and he can solo kill probably anyone aside from the Timber Saw at this point. Is that when Execration just have to group up as five and say, well, if you want to fight us, then... Fortune. Like, well, they, they just move around and, and go as a gang team. They've got the Blink Daggers to do it. I think they have, they have to start killing people. Meepo's... DJ, DJ needs to run right now. Misery under the cover of Shikuchi actually doesn't get the pickup. Meepo is a little bit too far away with its core Meepo. Meepo's going to start taking control of the entire map. He can kind of farm wherever he wants. I don't think they have enough lockdown to kill him before he poops away. Uh, so, yeah, I think they either need to start addressing him or get kills on the other heroes. And that push in the mid lane, they did end up getting the tower, but they did suffer in terms of a couple of casualties. So I don't really like how this mid game is shaping up for Execration at all. They are ahead in kills, but Meepo is very large. Yeah. Very, very large. He's we're, we're, 18. We're going to get a better question, like, answer for that one later on, like when we see the Timbersaw, just how much, how much work he does against him. When you have Weaver getting a proper damage dealing item and not just the Desolate looking for something more. But this is when DC can maybe make their own play so they group up, they move through the Radiant Jungle, they won't find anybody. And again, it's a very basic, put that Observer Ward down in between the towers, realize what's going to go on, get Vision to get the fight. This area is very hard for them to gank, unless they come downhill. They're actually in Vision right now. There's three, three heroes with a double taunt. It is going to be the Axe. He actually gets the initiation this time, Moon. Does the work, defensive disruption, in comes Gabby. Chakram is down, he's gonna actually go through with the epicenter. Eclipse will turn on for resolution, Gabby is burning! They take way too much damage, execration! DJ won't be able to escape from this one. One last Lucid Beam will do the work. And the Weaver in the midst, he's looking for an opening, but now the Snowball, well, he knows it's over on the Weaver. This is dragging it back down, almost in range of the Sentry Ward. Shikuchi through, Saxon didn't find the target. Now Nando does find that kill. Gabby is back to the front lines with the Chakram, it's way too late, doesn't find the kill. Oh, if they got the Meepo out of that fight, it would have been, I think, okay for Execration, but Meepo did not end up dying to that heavy burst of magic damage from the Timber, because he's kind of the only one that can survive through this Eclipse and the mass poof damage, and of course they did walk into that Observer Ward, yep. leading to that two-man call. Yeah, that definitely didn't help things, and it's not going to help it now that we are has enough money to finish up his Aghanim Scepter. Yeah. So the Meepo will now expand even further. Yeah, get Scepter, and then just do Roche. You don't actually need a Vlaz because he went for 15% lifesteal at level 15. Now he has Evasion to boot on top of that. So, yeah, do Roche, swap out the Iron Talon, and he is going to be the most powerful hero in the game for the next 15 minutes or so. Is it for his last one worthwhile? Because he's gone for this very tanky kind of style. Is it worth getting the, the plus 400 health, or is it actually worth cutting your proof cooldown in half with that negative three seconds? I'm not sure. <sighs> Probably, I don't know, later game, your right clicks are doing a lot more damage. And 400 health on Meepo is a lot more than other heroes because like, health is just so important to him and he has the extra magic resist and you have no field on top of that. He just needs to survive in the fights. I think health is likely better. Well, DC's taken Roshan. Execration didn't respond in time. They're looking more towards that bottom lane, waiting for some kind of fight or just to push into the towers. I think they can they can kind of sweep down to three towers in the mid lane uh, right oh, now. That TP, SD, well, there is the Lucid Beam to actually cancel the TP out. And then he's punched down, so that's a very... Okay, that tower does not last yeah. long. Meepo isn't going to get really that much stronger after, after this. Already level 20. Yep. I mean, his 25 is like, okay, but relative to every other heroes in the game, he is like by far stronger. I, I'm kind of sure he can solo like four of the five heroes from Execration. All five, maybe not. The Weaver and the... Slaughter need to work together, get that minus armor on one of the Meepos and burst down one of the clones or the main one well. before. Yeah, well, bottom lane, there's a jump in. Meepo, well, the crush is there. DJ with the bar strike, allowing Nando some freedom to get away. Because they did go for the fight, this means the DC do not push into the tier 3 tower. But that may have also been a little bit preemptive to do so. Take out the tier 2s, actually control up the shrines. 
and then allow Meepo to not have anyone TPing in behind him. It's going to be a long time, though. If they want to take down both the T2s and then push down the Shrines, I think the Aegis is going to expire by then. They don't have the BOTs up on the Meepo. So like, he, he is large, but Execration are just going to try and, try and wait for him to peak so they can get their level 10, 15 talents on, on their side. And so you're looking to see Execration actually keep the split push going? and Yeah, they just need to avoid fighting the Meepo right now. You can't kill him twice, not with his team around him. And I think that's just kind of what they're avoiding at all costs is just a mass apocalypse near their base where they just sweep the base with Luna and Meepo afterwards. They need to prevent that from happening. Instead, fight inside the base and use your buybacks potentially. Even like the kill on the Meepo is going to be worth so much if they can get it. Yeah, they, they really need to kill him. But well, it's not, not a possibility right now. They'll let the tier two tower on the bottom lane go. Just the beetles to the swarm to slow down Wii. Doesn't really slow down the Meepo that much. And they're actually in a three in a three man position on the top lane to just look for some level of trade. He's getting some good money the way of DJ. He's already finished his four star for Blink Dagger, so they've got good maneuverability out from him. And Agadim Scepter is next on that wish list. Yeah, here they go. They're Timber actually gonna come up. Timbersaw is there for the defense. I, I, I think this is their best time. They can wait, but I think oh, it's more risky. Shaz found Gabby. Is Gabby? Yeah, he's going to chain out. The Chakram stolen up by Misery and Weeha. It's a lot of damage going into the tower. He's already got the roots over on Gabby as well as Lemic. They need the extra stun. There it is. Coming in from the slaughter. Control is not enough. You've already lost one. And now with the Eclipse going off, Gabby pushed away with the four staff. It's enough range. The Barra Strike holding up Meepo. But it won't be enough to keep the Slardar alive. DC, they're just way too strong. And now the Blink Call. Move he found the big one, he found the Weaver, buybacks, none of them available. DJ comes in with the epicenter, Meepo is so low, but he's not dead, 180, and then the stun from Lucid Beam! It won't allow him to cut the Meepo down, execration have lost everything. Two buybacks are available, the DC are about to ravage the base of execration. What a strat from them. Do you see how like fast the base dies? Like Luna by herself is generally very strong at taking down T3s, but Luna with a Meepo is just absurd at this point in the game. Granted, they did give the Meepo a lot of space. They didn't really address address the Meepo issue in terms of uh, how they how they played, but... Well, most people address that issue by banning him out in the first two. Yeah, I think there were, there were some opportunities for, for them to do so, but everything was just like a, a tad bit too slow from them, and Weaver maybe parked himself a, a, on the bottom lane a little bit too much. Like, what does Lincoln's... Is, is Lincoln's really that great for him that game? Like, Meepo is going to farm like 12,000 gold while you farm your four or 5,000 for your Lincolns. Well, you want to bring back some of the older combat builds like BKB and Desolator and get him on the front lines quickly? Or, or, or I think they, they took way too long to invade the top lane. If they take down the top lane, they can limit Meepo's farm, and then he can't, like, do what he did to stall that T1 push. I think a lot of it came down to what happened in, in the top lane. And it's, it, he's kind of like, uh, I guess, a uh, Weeha. Earthbind won't be able to reach that far, but he does actually have that blink. He's, he's put his treads into his stash now. So going for the double Dragonlance and the fresh Eye of Scar that he's picked up. It's a lot of stats. Oh. That it is. And, and a lot of damage. At least Gabby's got some better D push. So he's got the Aghanim Scepter over on the Timbersaw. So double Chakrams is what DC will have to fight through. Yeah. But you may not care when, you got, when you've got that many, like 2.7k life, almost 2.8 on the Meepo. Yeah, they need like a, a Veil or just mass physical damage from the Weaver to actually stop it at this point. I think they, a DC like to use the Meepo as like an Alchemist counter. That's mostly when they picked it in the last patch was because Meepo just farms way faster than Alchemist and he also owns him in lane. And with like the Illusion Radiant Split Push not being as popular, like Meepo is very formidable in this where he can just put so much pressure on the enemy by being able to get level 18 at level eight, uh, 18 minutes. Oh, the opening resolution very early on that BKB gets losing Beam over on the Slana, but the quick four staffs away. Get them free of Sucks's ice shots. So they don't get controlled up. But at least that is going to be the 10 second BKB now down for the Luna. Wow, the, the life steal is actually really, really good. Normally, like when you farm the neutrals with your Meepos like this, they get like to, you know, two thirds, three quarters health, and then you're actually a very easy target in the upcoming team fights. But when your Meepos are this strong and you have the life steal, you don't actually have to micro them when you're doing neutrals. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely an added benefit of the of the talents for Meepo. It actually makes them a little bit easier to play, so you can actually concentrate more on fighting. 
Hard execration. They're actually outside their base at the moment, and DC are about to split them in half. DJ's waiting in the tree lines. At least he's going to get a good epicenter off. They start off, and now with the forest strike in, already two of them are down. The epicenter is out. How much work can Gabby do? The shark comes in working through Weeha, but will it be enough? No, it won't. He can't survive long enough. You'll get your buyback. Nando just gets the second grade running into the digital chaos, chaos lineup. The SK is back alive, and I think he's realized that there is no coming back in this game. Digital Chaos are about to own this base. I like the way they itemize. They have the Crimson Guard, they have the Blast, they have the Drums. There's just so much support around the, around the Meepo. Yeah, this definitely seems like a premeditated strategy. It seems easy enough to do, right? Like if you get through the second phase and the Meepo is there and you're not feeling really countered by it. Yeah. E easy pickup. It's not as risky anymore, it seems. The Meepo finally gets the BTs off. I suppose they'll allow him to go home for a second, but DC, they're not leaving. I, I like it because it, a lot of the times you're fooled by the Luna, thinking that that's going to be the heavy damage dealing core, but mm -hmm. kind of they, they swapped it up with the Meepo. And Luna's, she's not a support, but she's, she's not the main damage dealer. I'd be very surprised if she did more damage in the Meepo with this game. Uh, Weaver's looking for anything he can get. Misery might be the one, but he couldn't actually get it. The post in! Now you bar a strike. That'll be nice, but nice is not good enough. DJ's gone, and GG, well played. Digital Chaos execute perfectly. Gabby at least picks up some extra consolation prizes, but it's like a box of chocolates for competing. Digital Chaos, they will advance themselves forward into the winner's match. What an outstanding performance from Wii that game. You know, they didn't actually have to play that well. Like, Moon didn't do terribly great in the offlane sports, you know, died a yep. lot of times, but it didn't really matter because their strategy was just so sound. Yeah, I actually wonder, like, if Execration could have done anything better if you look towards that draft, if you look towards... Like, it wasn't even the global control that came out from the Meepo. It just seemed to be that Execration just were not... They didn't have enough strength to fight DC the first time they tried to do it. The Timbersaw got caught out. The Rubik again with that instant control, holding him under the tier one tower. So he got his bloodstone that instantly went down to eight charges. There was just no momentum coming in from the Timber or the Weaver. He had to do too much. It was a, it was a tough last pick for them. Yep. They, they just tried to get whatever they could out of it, but still terrific performance coming out from Digital Chaos. So they'll advance themselves forward into the next round. Of course, that is not too far away. Of course, they will have their game later on today. It's the uh, Group A matches coming up next. But before we get to that, we'll have ourselves a quick break.
All right, I am here with Weeha of Digital Chaos. Make some noise, come on, they enjoyed that. And of course, we have the latest in technology over here. Um, of course, as a tribute, uh, Weeha, look at this. This is, look, look at this beautiful, look at this beautiful thing going on. Loving the Meepo, beautiful, very nice. Okay, uh, Weeha, you guys were down, um, uh, you're down, you had a quick deficit, uh, uh, Execration had quite a lead in the beginning. Did, did you guys, were you guys worried? Did you think that, were you, uh, were you, did you think that, you know, maybe, okay, this is not looking good for us at any point during that? My team was a little bit worried, but they, they have faith in me. I was, I was not worried. I was basically just playing my own game, and it's a meeple, so you never know what can happen. Yes, that's, that's fantastic. This guy has faith in you, by the way. It's amazing. Uh, really quick, how awesome is Meepo um, in this patch? How is he playing for you guys? Everyone's saying he's awesome. And how do you feel about Meepo with this patch? I don't think he's that good. Just You don't have to ban him. It's just fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, just, he's just fine. <laughs> Follow up, very important question. At what point during the game did you feel that your teammates didn't matter anymore? I, I, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> well, anyway, congratulations. And of course, Meepo over here. This is actually the latest thing. You can tell him to do anything. He'll do something. Do the poof. Beautiful technology. The, the look at the, amazing. Very nice. Ladies and gentlemen, this is We Are Digital Chaos. Congratulations on the win. Thank you very much. Meepo doing great. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much, Jerry. Yes, and uh, congratulations for the uh, augmented reality of Meepo on the stage there. Very good. Um, brilliant performance, Kevin, in the end from DC. But it, it wasn't quite as straightforward in the early game. Execution uh, gave them a good run for their money. I, I would say it was, if anything, a big disappointment from, from DC in the beginning. They, they just they got killed so many times. The, the game was definitely looking very good for Execration. It just got to the point where um, it was Meepo out of control. The, the stat value that he got for every Dragon Lance, for the Ags, the fact that he's got really high magic resistance base. Mm -hmm. He survived that one team fight and then everything changed. Yeah, I think Execration definitely showed us certain signs of them being able to play out the game, but I think Meepo just proved to be. And we, there's a reason we talked about it before the game even started, right? We know that DC have probably one of the best Meepo players in the world, and Execration, they very clearly left it out, and I thought maybe they had a counter to it. I mean, they, they would have experienced a lot of Meepo being in Southeast Asia, but yeah. it just wasn't... Uh, it, the game plan just didn't seem good enough. I think in part, uh, I, I was not a big fan of the, the Weaver's item build. I don't feel that Lincoln's was the right pickup. I think it's too defensive. Remember, Kevin, what you were saying before this series about how Southeast Asia, you felt like they, they weren't as willing to commit mm -hmm. uh, to, to winning the game, you know, just playing out, playing not to lose, that sort of thing. I felt like that was that pickup in a nutshell, right? He was playing to be able to survive longer, but that was such a key point in that game. They needed to be able to either stomp Digital Chaos while the Meepo was away farming, or they needed to be able to kill the Meepo when he comes into the team fights while he's still relatively squishy. That, that later desolator timing, I think, cost them a lot of control early. And what was that Lincoln's going to do anyway? It's just like telekinesis? That's about it, right? Battle hunger. Oh, battle hunger or a yep. loosened beam. I'm, yeah, I'm, he, he skipped tread, so he did kind of need some HP. And, and I'm sure you guys have all had that game where you're playing Weaver or some other hero, and you're like, oh, I'll skip the BKB one item. I'll get it later. And then you just lose like three team fights in a row because of it. He's probably worried about that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, the deso might have been more important because I never really felt like execution was starting the fights. It, at some point, it was DC initiating, maybe missing their call even and then Execration trying to respond and getting close, but not close enough. Yeah, they had so many heroes that, like, as the, the team fight draws out, like, very clearly it goes in DC's favor, right? A Meepo with a long, drawn-out team fight, he'll always win that fight. Uh, a Luna is another great example of a hero you want to be able to burst quickly due to that ultimate, but they, they just seem to lack damage. I don't uh, think that's necessarily and also true, though. Like, a, a long, drawn-out fight, this is all momentum-based. If, if a fight was long and drawn-out, Timpasaw and Weaver both shines. So I don't think that was necessarily... The problem, it was just that they lost all this momentum and they, you know... I mean, that, but that's part of the reason, right? They gain momentum by being able to have a Desolator and, and be able to quickly execute some of these heroes in team fights and then take uh, objectives off of that as well. But I, I felt like they weren't getting control. They weren't taking anything away from Meepo. They have to kill the Meepo because at, at some point, if you, if you don't blow him up at the start of the fight, he's just going to chain net your heroes. And heroes like Slaughter looked worthless once he got netted because you know he's going to be netted for like five hits or something. If Meepo just poofs on top of that, he dies. 
And once he got to those late game stages with too much HP, he was out of control. They had to kill a Meepo towards the start of the fight. That way, the biggest damage and the biggest survivability from DC was gone. And that anti-mobility that it provides, was, it was too much. So Weeha wouldn't answer this. When did you think he, he could do this on his own? Um, I, once once that, the fight in the middle where the epicenter hit and he just barely survived, I was like, okay, there's, there's some disgusting stat gold yeah. value going for his hero. It's only going to get worse from there, yeah. right? Like, the fact he barely survived, like, okay, next time it's not even going to be close. Yeah. Did you, did you feel overall that uh, maybe the difference in the end came down to those team fights? DC much more crisp in it and, and executed them better, but mm. I mean, Execration had moments, didn't they? Yeah, I think, I think Kevin, you said it was kind of disappointing the, the Digital the, Chaos. The, the first 15. Yeah, yeah first I, I would agree with sure. that. Yeah. I would agree with that. But I think. as the game got longer and obviously they, they felt stronger as well with the kind of hero pool that they had, it seemed like that confidence came back again. Maybe a little bit of rust in the system. I would agree, uh, especially that, that fight bottom where they were smoked by the Radiant Tier 2, where they um, ice sharded the slaughter to start the fight. I feel like the slaughter should have been hidden there. Maybe a mistake from a support perspective, normally not playing like an offlane role. If they, if they initiate on the slaughter and prevent his blink dagger, then the whole fight's lost anyways, and that's exactly what happened. They initiate on him, uh, a couple nets, he dies. And that's, the, the, that's a big team fight initiator that can disable um, Meepo from doing a lot of damage. Yeah, I don't think neither Moon nor Saxa played up to their expected level, so... That in mind, this is a team that can go very far. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll retract my previous statement. This wasn't a, a rocket launcher game by them, by any means. Maybe from Weeha, but yeah. Execration played a lot better than I expected them. Yeah, Kraut certainly got behind Weeha, chanting his name at the end of the game as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's always nice to hear. All right, thank you very much to all three of you. Uh, we will, of course, get more from our expert panel in due course, but it's time once again to check in with Sir Action Slacks. He's apparently out there right now eating Malaysian food. Let's catch up and find out how he gets on. Hey guys, here in Malaysia, it's known as a uh, food culture, so we thought, of course, we had to try the local cuisine, and we got some friends here. Hello, sir. Now, what is this? Uh, this is what you call mata kuching. Ah. So it's a local fruit, which is pretty sweet. You've got to peel it, um, and you just eat it. We did. What was your name again, by the way? Uh, Kian. Oh, Kian. All right, well, let's try this out. Owen? Bacchu Pichu. Oh, God. It's like a grape. Yeah, it is, it is a bit like a grape. Yeah. It's a bit soft. And you just spit out spit out the seeds. Wow. There you go. I'll bit the seeds. <laughs> That's good. Bite in the seeds, good. All right. What do we got here? What is this strange alien looking thing? Yeah, so basically, this is a dragon fruit. So this is how it looks like in the flesh. Ah, yeah. Okay, okay. What was your name? Sorry. Jason. All right, Jason. Let's try out dragon fruit, Owen. All right. <laughs> Get it, Owen. All right. What's your review, buddy? Take a bite and tell me. Tastes like watermelon. It is a very watermelon-y, huh? And what do we have over here? What's your name? Yep. I'm Fendi. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we got a duck. That's a duck. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a duck. All right. Well, that's yep. good. All right. Owen. There we go. Give it a kiss. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How is it? Yeah. Looks like a decent bird. It tastes like a duck. <laughs> you don't want to bite on that Go side. On. Go for the belly. Yeah. I'm good. Go for the thighs. Yeah, I am. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Owen? That's a good duck. That's a good duck. Good Thank you, my friend. All right, guys. Well, that'll do it from here from Malaysia. Having some good food and some goodies, and we'll see you around. Thank you very much. Unbelievable. Slacks is like the greediest eater I've ever seen. He just I mean, the most, stagger the style. most staggering fact about it that is that duck tastes like duck. Well done, Slack. Who would have thought? Thanks for that wonderful, uh, what would we call that, culinary delights uh, from our very own Sir Action Slacks. Of course, he'll be bringing you plenty more content throughout the day. Uh, we are going to take a break very shortly. Just a quick chance for you, of course, to uh, talk about our sponsors here, one of which is Lenovo, personal favourite of mine. Got a tablet, got a laptop. Good job, Lenovo. Also, the Y710 right now, the Cube, which has the 1070 GTX in it, is available right now here for all of you who are in the Arena of Stars. You can go over to the Lenovo uh, area right now and claim, tell them Red Eye sent you, and they'll give you 400 RM off right now. So head over there as soon as you can. We are headed to a break right now, but when we come back, the serious stuff begins because it is winner's bracket final time in Group A. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> 